here. Well, I have this Intarsia by Judy Gale Roberts, this pattern, and there's a video where she uses some sanding shims and shows you know how to do the sanding and all that. And for some reason, sanding shims, I don't know, I just never used them before. So actually I just finished a project where I tried some sanding shims for the first time. Uh, so I'm really excited to do this using sanding shims and all that good stuff. Well, I have the pattern, a whole bunch of patterns printed off and I have some wood picked out and I have a bunch of monkey pod left over from my mom's desk, which I'm still working on, but I'm going to use some anywho. <laughs> so, um, I've got some setting out here. I have some walnut because I'm, I'm going to make this horse a, a buckskin horse, which just means that the mane is dark and the rest of it is like tan, different shades of tan. So I have my monkey pod laid out in dark, medium, and light. And now that I look at them, they kind of look the same. Um, but when I laid them out earlier, to me, they, they looked dark, medium, and light. So I'm still gonna go with that, I think. And then I've been cutting out the pieces and setting them out and then marking off when I have the pieces because that usually is very confusing to me and this is really helping. And I'm gonna use some ebony for some dark areas like the nostril and the eyeball and the lip. I'm gonna go make some copies of this because I need two more copies to get those pieces. I laid all the pieces out for each color and then I sprayed them with 3M77 spray adhesive. These are small pieces and all my ebony wood is small too, so it works. Then I put them directly on the wood. Then did the same thing with the mane, which will go on some walnut. Then the pieces for the darkest monkey pod, the lightest monkey pod, and the medium monkey pod. I also cut the sanding shims out of one quarter inch plywood. I removed all the fuzzies off the bottom and then the sections were ready for the scroll saw. I am really liking having this magnifying light and I'm also using a foot switch to control the saw. And these things really made a difference. I also learned to check for square on your pieces, because if you're out of square, things just aren't going to fit together well. I've also started removing the fuzzies off the pieces right after I cut them, but I found that the reverse tooth blades really reduce the fuzzies while using them on the Hegner anyway. Didn't seem to work before. I did have the pattern all together to check things while the paper was on, and when it looked good, I started removing the papers. All right, I'm gonna start sanding. Woohoo! That means I need to flip everything over so I can attach the shim to the back side. There, that was difficult. Woo, that was difficult. Then I used thin double-sided carpet tape and put them all over the pieces. Then removed the top layer to expose the stickiness and stuck the shim on. And did the same for the second section. Then I went outside to sand. And this was very exciting to sand the whole section at one time. The contouring video by Judy was a great guide, so I knew how to approach the horse face. It was a change for me to use a sander for most of the shaping. I usually would rough shape and then hand sand, but this technique allows for completing most of the shaping by machine. 
I used my pencil a lot along the way. Then I did the same with the neck section, and I loosened one part of the neck to change the shape where it meets the mane. When I had most of the group shaping where I wanted it, I went inside and used the flex drum, which is a smaller sander to shape the individual pieces of the eyes, nose, and other areas of the horse's face. I took the pieces off the shim using a palette knife, and some were stuck on there pretty good. I'd mark them with a pencil and shape them, then would place them back on the shim with the other pieces to see how things were coming together. It's another day! And it looks way better this morning than it did last night. <laughs> I haven't done anything to it. I don't know, I was just starting to get a little bit, ah, uh, last night, but this morning I'm like, oh, hey, cool. So, I'm going to be working on some things. I've discovered that projects always have an ugly phase or a disappointing phase, but I've also learned to keep on going because it does get to looking better. And taking a break from it helps too, even just overnight. So I continued shaping with the flex drum. And finally, I was ready to put the catch light in the eye. I drilled the hole and sharpened a piece of holly to a point and glued it in the hole. Then I went back to the big pneumatic sander and shaped the mane. I'm not sure why I didn't do it when I was sanding before, but I didn't. So I did that while I waited for the eye to dry. When I finished that part of the mane, I cut the extra holly off the catch light. Then sanded the entire eye. I would do this differently next time so as not to sand the ebony into the ivory or holly, you know what I mean. Then I used the flex drum on the mane to finish it up. Then I removed all of the pieces off of the shims. And put it back together and made adjustments where needed. Then I hand sanded each piece and made a nice roundness on the edges. Then I used Rubio Mono Coat for my finish. This is an oil wax mix and I really love this stuff. You wipe it on and wipe it off within 15 minutes. Then I let it sit to cure overnight before gluing it together. a new technique I just learned doing the backer. Spray a light coat of this. I am so excited about this project. I've learned a lot of new techniques lately and I'm loving it. So this one, you spray a light coat of adhesive to some paper. Then you assemble your project on the lightly sticky paper just to hold it in place while you trace around it. Then you remove your pieces and take that piece of paper and spray adhesive to the back side of that. Then attach it to your backer material. I used one quarter inch plywood. Then you cut within that trace line. Then you remove the paper off your backer. A putty knife helped with that for some areas. Then clean up the edges and it's ready for gluing. I put the horse together on the backer and started gluing. I am using tight bond quick and thick. This is also a new glue I've tried. I really like it because it sets up quickly, it sets up clear, and it has a slight spring to it so the wood can expand and stuff. Also, another new technique, I glued only a few sections at a time. It took longer to glue, but this kept the pieces from drifting. Even with the thicker glue, it tends to drift or slide, but gluing only a few pieces at a time solved that problem. 
So I glued a few, let it sit for about 15 minutes, then came back and glued a few more, left and did something else and did that for the whole project. I should have done this before gluing, but I was so excited to get this together. And my lap offers a nice soft surface so I don't damage the project. I transferred the verse Job 3922. It is talking about a horse and it says, it laughs at fear and is afraid of nothing. It does not run away from the sword. And I added my logo. I also added a private message because it is going to a special place. Then added a sawtooth hanger with some tiny screws. Then I darkened the edges of the backer using a brown sharpie. Now this is something that really should be done before gluing. And you could also stain the backer, but the sharpie worked. And I was careful not to get it on the project. Hey, the horse is all finished! This is a Judy Gale Roberts pattern, and she has a DVD where she's teaching how to contour using sanding shims. And she's contouring this pattern horse in that DVD. So I bought that DVD and I bought the pattern and followed along with her, really. And what a difference. These sanding shims are like, whoa! So thanks, Judy. I love it. Something else I really love about this horse is, so these are ebony and a little bit of holly on the eye. And then I have some walnut for the hair. And these are just different shades of monkey pod. Isn't that cool? I love that. Man, so pretty. I have all those pieces of wood from my mom's desk and I'm still working on it, but I have some little cutoffs and stuff. So I use those and I just love the wide variety. So this is the first intarsia I've done too with my new stuff. I've done a few other intarsias with my Hegner, but my light and my foot switch and then the magic of using sanding shims. Yeah, love it. So I really recommend you getting that CD and checking it out, trying it. And Judy has a lot of information on her website too. You can just read about it and stuff. Yay. So thanks for joining me, everybody. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.